everyone welcome to this short tutorial from pathology made simple at i love pathology today's topic is oncogenes and cancer see the learning outcomes for today's uh, topic is we will uh, study about the hallmarks of cancer in this we will understand the eight fundamental changes uh, which occur in the cell physiology uh, and uh, we will also discuss the proto oncogenes oncogenes and, and the role of oncogenes in cancer before we begin, uh, let us know what a neoplasm is. In the modern era, neoplasm is defined as a disorder of cell growth which is triggered by a series of acquired mutations affecting a single cell and its clonal progeny. Now let us move on to understand the hallmarks of cancer. We need to understand that all cancers display these eight fundamental changes in cell physiology which are referred to as hallmarks of cancer. Let us know what are these. Now consider this as a mass of uh, neoplastic tissue or a mass of malignant tissue. The first hallmark is self-sufficiency in the growth signals, which means these tumors have the capacity to proliferate without any external signals. The second one is insensitivity to anti-growth or growth inhibitory uh, signals, where these tumor cells do not respond to molecules that inhibit the growth of normal cells. The third one is evasion of apoptosis these tumors are uh, you know, resistant to the programmed cell death or apoptosis and they have limitless replicative potential which is also referred to as immortality okay so they have you know unrestricted proliferative capacity like a stem cell so in the previous tutorials we have discussed this aspect when we talked about telomeres and uh, telomerase the fifth one is sustained angiogenesis now we need to know that the tumor cells cannot grow without a vascular supply and that is the reason they can have their own vascular supply and that is called as angiogenesis sixth one is the ability to invade and metastasize which is the characteristic of a malignant neoplasm the seventh one is reprogramming of energy metabolism okay that means the cellular metabolism of tumor cells are altered there is a metabolic switch to aerobic glycolysis okay and that results in uh, synthesis of molecules which are needed for their rapid cell growth and the last one is evasion of immune system so you know they have that ability to evade the host immune response and that's how they proliferate so these are the eight important hallmarks of cancer Apart from these eight hallmarks of cancer, there are other two uh, important uh, aspects where they can accelerate the cancer and these are genomic instability and cancer or tumor promoting inflammation. So in this tutorial, uh, let us understand the first hallmark of cancer that is self-sufficiency in the growth signals. Now, what are oncogenes? Oncogenes are the ones which promote unregulated proliferation that is autonomous cell growth that is what we refer to as self-sufficiency in growth signals. The unmutated counterpart of oncogenes are proto-oncogenes. Let us understand these in detail. See the proto-oncogenes are the genes which encode proteins which helps in normal growth and for the growth of normal cell it needs growth factor as a signal. So now these proto-oncogenes, when they are converted to oncogenes, okay, they are the ones which are uh, needed for the development of cancer. How does the proto-oncogene get converted to an oncogene? So the reason for that is these things. One, it can be because of mutations in the form of point mutations or it can be because of deletions. It can be because of chromosomal translocations or gene amplifications or overexpressions. All these chromosomal uh, changes, you know, results in the development of oncogenes from proto-oncogenes. Now, what does oncogenes do? Oncogenes encode proteins which are called as oncoproteins. These oncoproteins are similar to that of proteins which are derived from proto-oncogenes in, uh, you know, inducing the growth. But here the growth is malignant growth because there is no need for growth factors for the oncoproteins to induce cell growth that is why we call this as self-sufficiency in growth signals now what is the role of oncoproteins in cancer to understand this let us see how a normal cell respond to a growth factor so this can be explained uh, with this illustration so let us assume that this is a plasma membrane and that is a nucleus okay now you have a growth factor this growth factor goes and binds to a growth factor receptor which is a transmembrane receptor 
okay so this growth factor receptor transmits the signals from the growth factor to the signal transducing proteins so in this illustration the signal transducing protein is ras which itself is bound to a cytoplasmic side of uh, plasma membrane by a binding uh, agent called farnesite normally ras is in inactive state uh, when it is bound to gdp whereas once it becomes active it is bound to a GTP. This active uh, RAS further stimulates MAP kinase and uh, PI3 kinase pathways. It is through this uh, kinase pathway the signal is transmitted to the nuclear where uh, there is induction and activation of nuclear regulatory factors which you know that initiate DNA transcription. So once transcription is initiated what happens here is what happens here is that there is expression of factors which promote the uh, entry and progression of a cell into the cell cycle so once the cell progresses to cell cycle and that results in uh, cell division thus we need to know that these steps are important for the normal growth of the cell when they are stimulated by the factors the steps are one step number one is when there is a binding of growth factor to its specific receptor step number two is activation of growth factor receptor which in turn activates cytoplasmic signal transaction proteins step number three is activation of these signal transaction proteins step number four is transcription process whereas step number five involves the cell cycle progression so any component of these pathways you know when they are mutated they act as oncoproteins and that is what they result in the development of tumors now let us see what are these oncogenes and oncoproteins and the tumors associated with these oncoproteins so we know that the growth factors are the important ones at the, in the first step second one being growth factor receptors the third one signal transduction proteins the fourth one being nuclear regulatory proteins and the fifth one being cell cycle regulatory proteins now uh, let us know in each of these categories what are the proto-oncogenes and uh, how these proto-oncogenes are activated in tumors to form oncogenes and what are the associated uh, tumors so the proto-oncogenes for the category of growth factors are uh, these the sis tgf alpha hst1 and int2 the mode of activation of these proto-oncogenes almost almost all of these are um, due to overexpression of these genes so it is the overexpression which results in the conversion of these proto-oncogenes to oncogenes where the tumors associated are astrocytomas hepatocellular carcinomas carcinoma of the stomach and carcinoma bladder so coming to the second category of growth factor receptors the proto-oncogenes are erbb1 erbb2 and pdgfr the mode of activation of these proto-oncogenes are for ERBB1 it is point mutation whereas amplification is for ERBB2. Overexpression is for PDGFR. The tumors associated are uh, squamous cell carcinomas of the lung for ERBB1, breast and ovarian carcinomas for ERBB2 and gliomas for the PDGFR mutation or overexpression. The third category is signal transaction proteins where they are divided into GTP binding and non-receptor tyrosine kinase. The GTP binding is RAS which we uh, discussed a uh, while ago. RAS is the most common uh, proto-oncogene. You know? The mode of activation of uh, this particular proto-oncogene in tumor is point mutation. And the tumors associated are um, carcinomas of the lung, colon and pancreas. Whereas the translocation of ABL gene is one uh, implicated in chronic myeloid leukemia. Coming to the fourth category of nuclear regulatory proteins, these are the three important proto-oncogenes, CMYC, uh, NMYC and LMYC. The tumors associated are Burkitt's lymphoma, neuroblastomas and lung carcinomas. So the Burkitt's lymphoma is because of uh, translocation of CMYC gene whereas neuroblastomas and lung carcinomas are because of amplification of NMYC and LMYC proto-oncogenes. So the last category is cell cycle regulatory proteins which are the cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases. The, uh, the proto-oncogenes are cyclin D and CDK4. The tumors associated are carcinoma of the breast, mantle cell lymphomas, and glioblastomas and melanomas so carcinoma breast and mantle cell lymphomas are because of you know, translocation of cyclin d gene whereas amplification of cdk4 results in glioblastoma and melanoma 
So in summary, these are the various categories where we discuss the proto-oncogenes and their mode of activation of these proto-oncogenes to oncogenes and the tumors associated with those oncogenes and oncoproteins. So in summary, we discussed about the eight fundamental changes which occurs in almost all cancers and then we discussed the various uh, proto-oncogenes, oncogenes and oncoproteins and their roles in cancer. Thank you for watching. Please visit this website ilopathology.com for uh, more details and updates in the form of PowerPoint presentations, illustrations and uh, uh, diagrams. Okay. If you like this video, please hit like button. Please do comment, subscribe for more videos to come and then please do share.